All right, everyone. This is Sandcast Beach Volleyball with Triborn and Travis Mawerder. And we got a, a guest coming in from the mountains today, Miss Tracy <laughs> Callahan. Yes. What's going on, Trace? Hey, guys. How are you? Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, I um, went on a little Mount Baldy getaway um, and then lasted there for about 12 hours. And I realized I was really bored and nobody was there. <laughs> and uh, so I came to my parents' house. <laughs> Which is still pretty close to, to Mount Baldy though, right? Yeah, it's just at the base of the foothills, so it's nice. Okay. It's different. It's in California. It's like an hour from the beach. It's where I grew up. Um, so there's no beach volleyball out here yet, uh, or I guess sand volleyball because it's not really beach. But um, but yeah, there's some that's like emerging, but it's, it's a totally different experience. But it's about 20 degrees hotter too, so in the heat of the summer, which is right now, it's so hot. It's been but, warm. Uh, this is like the one like heat wave in California where it's like three or four weeks every summer where it's like unbearable to not have air conditioning. And I think, yes, I think we're there. <laughs> exactly. Even at the beaches in Redondo, it was like 90 degrees, which is, was, you know, it's hot. Yeah. That's warm. It's really hot. It's, I was shocked when I, when I, I was down in San Diego for a few days and I drove up here. I was like, 92? My car was 92 and I, I had to roll the window down. Like, really? Yeah, oh, I always feel the top of my windshield, like that's how I test the, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm just always like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like if you have leather seats, this is like the one time a year you like sit down, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's been fun to see uh, like all the AVP players ever since the last event happened, everyone just like scattered to the mountains. Yeah. Like, my editor asked me a story on like, all right, like what's everyone doing right now? I was like, I can tell you exactly what everyone's doing. It's like, <laughs> Triborn, went vacation into the mountains. Stafford Slick, road trip, into the mountains. Billy Allen, into the mountains. April Ross, Montana, into the mountains. Like, every Dude, what's, what is up with the mountains? Like, we're just, we're just so over the beach right now that we have to just, like, head. I don't know. What, what's up with that? I think if you're a beach lover and you spend so much time training on the beach and playing on yeah. the beach, then you're just like, all right, we need to get the other thing that we love. So like go to the mountains. Yeah, for sure. Or, I, don't yeah, know. I think we're just like, I don't know. We just love being out in nature and yeah. we're like, cause the beach Delaney looked at the beach as like the office. And so she still loves being outside. So she's like, I want to be outside, but not on the beach and just, cause you can't just like sit on a beach. She has a lot of trouble doing that. So we always go for yeah. hikes and backpacking. We just, we just planned out. We're doing a little backpacking trip in two weeks. So oh, I, I don't know. I feel like we just love being outside. And so yeah. you want to get away from the office. Yeah, I did. A, I had a little retail job in Manhattan Beach uh, before I started playing volleyball again. And my favorite part of that job is when I had to take the check to the bank and walk outside. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's my favorite part. And the girl's like, oh, I hate doing that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I mean, you know, you're you're a trekker. I mean, because you did before – in between your, your kind of volleyball journeys, you did the Camino del Santiago. Yeah, Camino del Santiago. Yeah. yeah. Can you uh can you like walk the listeners through like what that is? And because I I loved chatting with you about it uh, at dinner yeah. a month ago. It's such a cool experience. Yeah, it was definitely one of those formative experiences like of my life, and something that I think every person, if they get an opportunity to do something like that, um, should take the time. I was in this weird phase where I was I was playing beach volleyball but like I just didn't have the means to make it to the next level and I knew it you know so I was looking for alternative paths and um I was I went to Florida State and coached there and kind of got the idea of like what that's like to coach at the college level and then I came back and I had I don't know about you guys but sometimes I get these like grandiose ideas of who I think I am. And um, so I had this idea and that my life was going to be this life of service. I grew up super uh, Christian background. So that was always something that was in my background. Um, so this life of service, which looks like me doing aquaponics somewhere in um, West Africa. So that was like my plan. So I was actually like in Hawaii, they had like this, um, it was this organization, I can't remember what it's called, but they taught people how to do aquaponics. And then I knew this lady who had an orphanage. I don't remember which country, but like, so I had these connections. I was going to make this work. So I knew that going from like my consumer Western mentality, if I was going to end up doing something like that for my life, 
that I had to like shed all commercialism and consumerism. So a friend of mine, Mitzi Kincaid, um, that I lived with in San Clemente at one point, she had walked the Camino. And before, like this Camino is something that uh, Catholic pilgrims have done since, I don't know, like maybe the 11th century. Like this is a really, like this big tradition of, they, they did it for penance. So like they would walk, it would take them months because obviously, well, I mean, if just the conditions weren't as great as they are now, but um, so it's been a long, and then even before it was a Catholic thing, it was actually a pagan thing where people would walk this journey and they say that the Camino de Santiago, it goes like, it, it goes along this path of the stars too. So it's like this very religious, but mystical journey that there's been books about and documentaries and, um, you know, they've made movies about it. So it's, yeah. So I had this space in between from like, before I was going to go to Hawaii to like, I had just gotten back from Florida state. And uh, I had like a couple thousand dollars. I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything else. So this might be like the right time in my life to go. So I booked a ticket. I went by myself and I landed in Spain. And well, actually, you, you, I landed in Spain, but then you start um, in the French Pyrenees and you walk. It's basically, I went from the French Pyrenees all the way to the coast past Santiago, but altogether it's about 500 miles. And so you just take yourself a backpack a um, couple things of clothes and you get a passport. They give you a passport. That's just like this little piece of paper. And um, you're able to stop along the way at these places called albergues. And they're just like these hostels that are just for pilgrims. So that's pretty much it is like, and you just basically go from town to town walking. It's Northern Spain. So it's more remote, smaller villages, a lot of like farming towns. And the beauty of it is that is really the people that you meet along the way. And like you guys have traveled a lot internationally or just traveled and you've met people, but, and I've met a lot of people from all over the world, but there's something very unique about this experience because you, you're just basically doing these walking meditations with people and they come from all these different life experiences and they're there for a reason, whether they just went they're, they're usually in some sort of transition in their life as well, whether it was like a relationship just ended or the loss of a loved one or retirement or um, a lot of Europeans just do it like little chunks at a time because it's so close. So I ended up having these amazing conversations um, with people from all over the world. And the, the biggest thing that we talked about was honestly love and love that was lost and forgiveness and just like these stories of um, uh, just these human experience stories with that like really connected us. And it was this beautiful journey where everybody was really vulnerable and open. And um, I really think for me, it was every day. I mean, I'm a big journaler. So every day I was like journaling um, about this journey. But um, the funny thing that, well, I think it's kind of funny is I went on this journey to get rid of commercialism and this Western consumer idea. And so as soon as I got on the Camino, I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm not going to stay at the albergues. That's for people who need electricity and hot water. <laughs> like I'm going to camp and I'm going to, you know, really just do it the right way. And after the first day, all I wanted was like a glass of wine, a hot shower, <laughs> you know, like I didn't, and then I was like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to find a tent, you know? And then that wasn't my experience at all. And I realized like, wow, I'm not the person that's meant to, you know, like, that's not me. I thought it was me. I wanted it to be me, but that's not me. So it really, it was a journey of self-discovery. Um, and just like, honestly, these amazing little life lessons along the way that I still draw from even now, and I'm sure I'll draw from in the future. Um, that really, I, I feel like it's really shaped the person that I'm becoming and it really strengthened, um, my sense of self, uh, in a way. So, um, and it's just really, I've, I think the more one can know about themselves, the, the more they can do um, in this world, because then you're not like trying to be somebody else. You're really settled into who you are. And then you have the freedom then to express who you are. Um, so that was, it was just such a beautiful journey. And it's actually something that I'm going to uh, write about because there were so many great stories that came from it. Um, and just like some incredible, I mean, just the things that I talked, I, I mean, I, I could go into so many stories, but just forgiveness. And, you know, I think when we share human stories, even things like podcasts, um, and one of the reasons I love podcasts is that it is the relatability that you get with people, you know, and it really just kind of, it reminds you of things in your life and, and just 
I guess, again, I can only say is like the shared humanity. So yeah, it was just a beautiful journey. And um, yeah, it's something that I, I just really recommend to everybody, especially like with your wife. Oh my gosh, that would be, Liza. <laughs> you know, that would be amazing. Yeah. So that's awesome. That sounds really cool. I feel like the, like when you go on that kind of inner journey for yourself, you, you find that authenticity, which makes you more real and relatable to other people right because a lot of times we're putting out this person that that we don't that isn't exactly us but then once you become authentic with yourself and happy with that person then everyone can start to relate to you even like when you're like basically trying less to relate to right people. it's kind Absolutely. of how that works yeah yeah and like me when i i took myself out of the sport you know like i did that to myself yeah um and a lot of it was because I had to, I had to change. I don't think at that time I had the strength to, to be able to handle, um, the, just how hard it is, you know? Um, so I took myself out of the sport and then I think in order to get the strength to come back in, knowing like how much harder it was going to be, um, I had to have gone on a journey like that. Yeah. Totally. What year, what year was it that you did that? That was uh, the summer of 2016. Okay. And then, cause you mentioned you, you were in volleyball and then you kind of, you had this perceived ceiling. You're like, I'm not going to be able to hit that. Yes. So then there was one match I have to tell you, cause it's okay. kind of funny. And if these people are listening, they might laugh. <laughs> I played, I played, um, I played April and Carrie in new Orleans in 2015. Okay. And I was playing with Teal Hunkis. And I remember they, like the year before we played him, we lost him. I played with Emily Stockman and uh, we lost to him, but the scores weren't that bad, right? I felt, I didn't, I wasn't embarrassed, right? Yeah. So then I played with Teal. We got our asses handed to us, okay? <laughs> and I, I was literally like, you know, these two women are going to go back to their coaches after this tournament. They're going to keep getting better. I'm going to go back to the South Bay and I'm going to try to call like two girls to play with me. And like, then I'm, we're going to have to, figure out a skit like I'm like there's no direction I don't even know how to get better and so at that point I was like I can't like this is so literally they kind of retired me in a way but now <laughs> I'm back so watch out but uh, no. uh yeah so that was that was a, I remember that match very clearly <laughs> what what was it then that made you shift that mindset back to getting you on the beach because that's a hard thing to break through where you have that perceived ceiling and you literally like you you mentioned you like had this mini retirement from it and you were getting out, you were exploring what else to do outside of beach. I'm really curious what got you back onto the sand now thinking that like, you know what, when I play April, I don't, I'm not going to get my ass kicked. Like I can hold my own now. Yeah. Um, I think I am, I love experiences so I will throw myself into all sorts of experiences just to see what it's like, good or bad. And I think, so some can call it unfocused. And I think that that was a part of like my journey where I had to go out and experience a bunch of different things, like um, just doing the same thing over and over. Like, especially when you're in your twenties and you feel like you will always have time. There will always be that opportunity you know, like you, it's always been there. It will always be there. Like you, when you come from like that forward thinking state and you never get to kind of like look back and see, I didn't realize that like this volleyball thing was so temporary, you know, and I won't always, I won't always have it and opportunities won't always be right. So I had, I went out and I just had different experiences. Like what's it like to coach. I, um, you know, what's it like to go across Spain? What's it like to, I worked on a bee farm for a little bit and an organic farm for a little bit. Um, and I got a yoga certification and just had like all different types of life experiences. And then I met uh, my man, who, my man, <laughs> I met a man who <laughs> soon became my husband. <laughs> now he's your man. Uh, yeah, I met a man. Uh, and we were just talking about like, uh, bucket list stuff and what we like things we'd like to do and at this time I was just like teaching yoga and coaching and um, I would say I was like kind of directionless I still I still trusted myself but I didn't really have any sort of like purpose yet it was like still emerging and uh, I just told him like you know I like I've I've always wanted to be a defender on the world tour like to play on the world tour would be just like a dream come true right but I was I never would have said that out loud because one 
I thought it was embarrassing because like if I were looking at myself from an outsider perspective, I would be like, oh my gosh, this like average blocker who like doesn't move that fast wants to be a defender oh my gosh on the world tour are you oh this poor girl so I was super (laughs) embarrassed to say it and because I did appear so um unfocused you know I always had such a hard like you know uh preseason training but then when the season came around I never played like I just didn't ever have um I wasn't consistent so I was embarrassed and so I I didn't ever want to say that so then my husband was like, well, like, I think if you just got in really good shape, like, I think you could, I think you could do well. So that was my goal. One was like, what would happen if I got in really good shape? And, um, so I, I committed to that. And then, um, yeah. And then I quickly met Evie Matthews. So right when I started playing, Oh, cause I told Matt, I'm like, look, if I'm going to st- like, I used to do this and I, I'm not going to get back into volleyball if I'm like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the right way. Like, I'm going to get a coach. I'm going to make sure I'm in great shape. Like, I was never in great shape when I played before. I was, like, not even in average shape. I just wasn't in shape. And um, so I'm, like, if I'm going to do it again, like, and I know how hard it is, like, I'm going to do it right. I've got to, I got to find sponsors. Like, I have to, like, make it prof- a professional job. So that was kind of, like, the intention behind it all. And then I met Evie through a friend, um, Bobby Jacobs, who was a friend okay. of mine in Newport Beach. Like, I saw Bobby. Okay. So I don't even like for me, Bobby, <laughs> whenever I thought about him, he's like the guy in Newport beach that like I used to go out and see at night, you know? And so when I saw him in San Jose, I was just like, Bobby, <laughs> like <laughs> main draw. Like what? <laughs> yeah. I must've been on the sport for so long, <laughs> you know? But so Bobby actually, thank you, Bobby introduced me to Evie. And then I stuck with Evie and just, like, you know, try, you've worked with Evie and, and, uh, Travis, you worked with Evie a little bit, you know, like there's something really special about him and, um, there, what he brings to the game was what I, he just, the, his IQ of the game is, I was missing that completely. So, um, yeah, so I was fortunate to start working with him and I kind of stalked him and I was like, look, I know you've got like your other team, but any chance that I can work with you, like, I'm literally going to be right here. So watch out. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Evie's amazing. I, I yeah. love the, I mean, just spending time with him, just, he's just a great person, but yeah, like the way he sees the game is like, it's almost like opposite of the way I see it, which is why it was so valuable to have him around. Cause he can like remember every point and everyone's tendencies. And like, I can't remember one point ago. So. <laughs> I'm exactly the same way. We'll be in the middle of a drill and I'll turn on and I'll say, like, what just happened in that side out? Like, what did I do? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> He's like, remember that point when you went like this and did that? I'm like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I remember like match point. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but does, it, does the game slowly come back to you? Because it'll slowly come back to me, but I, I, I literally black out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. it, it. sometimes I have to watch footage, to be honest. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like, how I do. Obviously, like, black it out that much. But <laughs> Evie, like, can almost, like, he can be, like, a in-person film session. Because he'd be right. like, oh, you passed it. It was, this was the score. You did this, that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I think that's yeah. why me and Evie can have such long conversations. Because I have a similar memory to Evie, where I can't forget things. Like that just happened in volleyball. So we we'll just like be talking and just like have a a full on audio replay of a drill or like a set that we did. And and it's like, Oh, we just wasted 25 minutes of practice. Just talking. That was definitely one thing with Evie. That's like uh, Hayden's job when he's, uh, when Evie and Hayden are together. Evie, stop talking. Let's go. (laughs) Go. His mind will just go. But, but there's so much good knowledge in there. It's great. One thing I'm I'm curious about, Trace, is so you mentioned you were like sort of embarrassed to almost say it out loud that you were switching to defense because yeah. I mean you're tall. I mean for on the women's side you're six foot two, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, six six one and three quarters. Let's okay, just say that. okay. Come. I mean, if I'm being honest, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll round you up six two. Um, was it almost hard to find a coach who was also able to buy in on that or was Evie like you're right like let's go like some of the best defenders in the world like April Ross is six foot two ish um was he bought in on that as well or was he like you know what 
maybe you should be a blocker because you're also tall even for a blocker. Well, so when I started with him, I was playing um, with Avery Bush. She was the one who kind of okay. like, actually, I should probably thank Rafi for getting me back into beach volleyball because Avery was dating Rafi at the time. So <laughs> Rafi so, yeah. loves taking credit for things. She still <laughs> takes credit for my marriage. So <laughs> yeah, that's why she'll I take full credit for all of your success as a defender. <laughs> Rafi takes credit for my whole career because he was uh, my first MVP I played with him. <laughs> We have a lot in common, guys. Thank you, Rafi. Rafi (laughs) takes credit for all of our success, and (laughs) Evie's coaching us. (laughs) That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Um, I think that's just awesome, like, the way you approached it this time around. I can totally relate to that. I mean, we're already seeing results, first of all. And – but when I first came onto the pro scene, I I had to have that conversation with myself, like, sorry about that like what's my what is my now it's calling it's calling for my uh the tech, phone and everywhere. Computer. Um, i had to ask myself what was why am i playing you know and yeah and really my thing was like i've been a fan of professional sports since i was a kid like people i look up to are professional athletes like i want to have that experience mm-hmm. it wasn't like i wasn't well, once I had that conversation, I realized that I didn't want to make everything rely on results, you know, like, and how, how I was doing, or if other people perceived me at that level, it was like, I just want to experience being that athlete. So I'm going to do all right. the things that those athletes do, no matter what happens, and then see where that lets me fall. Right. Um, and I feel like that made like all the difference for me. Like, cause yeah. when I, I did that when I was playing overseas in Puerto Rico and that kind of prepped me. And then I came out on the sand and got, was lucky enough to just practice. Like literally just Hayden was having me help him get reps. He just needed someone, but I was going about things. So kind of professionally at that point that he saw that and was like, Oh, like maybe show up to a few more practices. And then eventually yeah. he was like, hey, you want to play? I was like, what are you, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> it's just like, I just believe. So, yeah, exactly. Like me. <laughs> I could have sworn we were just practicing like I was serving you both. <laughs> uh, but I think that's made the, the biggest difference for me, the fact that I just kind of committed to like being the athlete that I wanted, no matter what the results were, no matter what like other people thought. And then all the results followed that. And and the right people start falling into your and team. That's, right? the, that's the key is that exactly. the right people start falling. Like I – be I of course I like when I played before of course I wanted to be like a pro like and that's why I played beach volleyball versus like anything indoor overseas because I always I wanted to play at the highest level I could play at right yeah. so I figured I don't really have like any of the history I didn't go to like a top you know division one school so I don't know if I'll be able to make it on those teams and I want to spend 10 years trying to make it to like a top team on the international circuit and honestly I wanted to live in California so um mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was so when I started playing beach volleyball in 2010 when the ADP went bankrupt, which was an unfortunate timing. Um, but I, I wanted to be a pro, but I didn't have the same intention. I just had this like dream, but it wasn't like I wasn't actively seeking these these people out, you know. And that's the thing is like when I came back this time, things like it's like I just I just kept putting forth the effort. Like like literally this jar right here is full of all of the tears that I've cried in the last like two <laughs> years of how difficult this has been. Right. Um, and just like, okay, well, I'm just going to keep going. Like, this is stupid, but I'm just going to keep going. Um, and, but it was like the persistency and the belief and that's the key. Like people just come into your life. Like why the heck was I able to start training with Mikhail? Like, it doesn't even make sense. You know, um, like why Evie through Bobby Jacobs, um and, and just on so many of the other people I've met along the way it's just it's it's been an incredible um so yeah I just think that there's so much behind that what what would you say drives you through that I mean because that's a, a fair amount of adversity <laughs> yeah. no you know? like straight out like I'm not even exaggerating <laughs> no because like I mean that's I didn't bring this to like show you back. but my niece is doing a project so <laughs> it happens to be on the table <laughs> I was, I was like, is that really full? <laughs> no, this is full though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real, those are the real tears. <laughs> <In the gallon. laughs> but 
it, it would have been the easy thing to do obviously would have been to quit and just being like, you know what? You're right. I'm not meant to play defense. Like you're right. Um, professional beach volleyball wasn't for me. I tried it. You know, you're right. Like maybe coaching is my avenue or doing this is my avenue. Why did you keep going and like are still continuing to go? And, and from my view, climbing the ladder pretty dang fast. So I quit. I'm a quitter. Like I quit. I mean, that's what I did. No, seriously. Like in 2015, I quit. And I let the circumstances of life take away from this like inner dream, which I feel like is this, like, I feel like beach volleyball, I mean, everybody has their own little belief system, but I feel like I was born to play beach volleyball. Like this is just a part of my life's part of my life's path. So I stopped that in 2015. So coming back into it, I have, I constantly have these conversations with I don't know if it's with God or if it's just with life or if it's with like the devil. I don't even know, but it's this conversation where I feel like I keep getting these things thrown at me, you know, whether it's like injuries or like personal things I'm having to deal with or like partnership stuff or sponsorship stuff. And it's just like these things that are like, are you, are you sure you still want it? Like, are you sure? Like, this is going to be hard. Like, and I'm like, fuck you. Like, yeah, I want it. Like keep, no matter what you throw at me, I'm going to keep going. Oh, COVID and quarantine. Huh? Like, I'm going to keep practicing. Like that was literally my mindset is like, you can throw whatever you want at me. Like, because I was a quitter, I have to go above and beyond now to, to not quit when yeah. like life wants me to quit. Because I used to think like, and I, and I think this is because of like my, my upbringing and like, and faith. And I think that I was, this was a wrong way of thinking, but I thought that like, if God wanted you to do something, like it would just kind of happen, you right. know? And like you put in your work, but it's going to happen. And I realized that that's kind of like actually not true. And like, yeah, God can put like the seed and the desire in your heart, but you're the one that has to do the work. And like, you're going to come across all sorts of obstacles and things that are going to derail you, but you have to make the choice every single day or maybe multiple times a day to keep going. If you really believe that that seed was been, has been planted, you know? And so I didn't have that second part of it. So now, um, you know, in the, in the face of like, nobody's going to take me seriously. Like, okay, you guys, I couldn't get a partner. I could not get a partner when I first came out to beach volleyball. Like I would, I couldn't get a partner for CBVA. Like people that I'm like, surely they would play with me. Like, sorry, no, I can't. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I, I wish this was a single, single person sport. Cause I can't get one person to play with me. So yeah. like things like that, where I'm like people that I thought like, I'm, it's, I'm like heads, like I'm head and shoulders better than this player but they won't even partner with me for whatever reason, you know? So like, those are the little things that I kind of had to like get past and, um, and just decide like, this is what I'm doing. Um, but when I first started uh, with Evie, I was a blocker and then I played with Maria. And then it, it was like, in my mind, it was like the time, like, okay, you need to switch now. And so fortunately, like Carly believed in the dream, you know, believed in the, the dream of two, two big players. So she was really, like the first opportunity I got to start training as a defender. Um, and then, yeah. And then Chrissy, she bought in, you know, so I got lucky with that too. And then, you know, we just started working together. And so it's like, but like, I couldn't have seen this, you know, back then I just had to follow the little crumb that was in front of me and make sure I was, you know, that I maximized that. And I took it full advantage of like that opportunity and I think that's honestly the thing that drives me the most is um, realizing that like I want to squeeze the most out of every opportunity and out of like every single moment. And I think I get into, I can overdo it sometimes and not, re and not like give myself enough like time to recover or whatever. Like I've heard that before from coaches, but for me, it's like you only get so much time. Like we're so limited that like you have to go like full reckless abandon. Otherwise, like, what are you doing? You know? And that's where I'm at now. I wasn't like that when I was 22, 22. I was like, I was drinking 40 ounce beers after, you know, ABP next events, even though that didn't <laughs> exist, but like similar, you know, like totally different person now. Yeah. I'm down to Mickey's. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, like in terms of what you're saying earlier, just like you were a, quote unquote quitter you're calling yourself but um the biggest thing with though with that i feel like is when you you're like inspired in one moment where we all get inspired to like okay i'm gonna go do this and then we tell ourselves we're gonna do it 
But every time you really actually commit and tell yourself you're going to do something and then you don't follow through, you're basically lying to yourself. It's like, the, mm -hmm. and then the next time that you want to do something, you don't have the faith in yourself to follow through, you know? And if, if, if sure. someone does that over and over, you start to lose faith in yourself. So that's like why I've noticed is like the most important thing is like, don't commit to it. Don't just say, I'm going to do it. Like really put thought in. And then if you put whatever pen to paper and like write it down as your goal, then you have to do it. Cause you're just like throwing yourself under the bus. If not. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I've noticed. Yeah. And I think that like, I definitely, I, I, the reason I like to call myself a quitter is because like, I think, I look at things not so much as like black and white anymore, but I realize like if you're a quitter, you can also not be a quitter. Like we don't have to just define ourselves by these, these things. Like, so just as much as I was a quitter now I I've chosen not to be. And there's even other things in my life where I've like, I've committed and I've written it down. I'm going to do this. And then like, I just don't do it. And then sometimes when that happens, it creates shame, obviously. And I think what I've realized is just because I, I did something in the past, it doesn't mean that I can't make the decision right now to, to do something about it. You know, and I think that's where I see a lot of people get into trouble is they're stuck in the decision that they made in their past and they're worried about like how they're going to be perceived. You know, I knew I wasn't, I knew people weren't going to give me the time of day at first, but if I committed to it and then started getting some results, like then like the thing that changes people's perceptions is, is winning, you know? So as soon as you start winning then people are like, oh yeah. Like, okay, yeah, you want to come into our practice? I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm the same person I was last week. I just happened to win a couple more games over the weekend. But sure, yeah, I'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know? But it's just how it works. Yeah. And it seems it seems like you and Chrissy, like, developed something pretty fast. Because you guys haven't been playing that long. And then, like, you were the only team of the entire AVP series to make it out of the qualifier, starting in the qualifier, and make all three main draws. And that, that's super impressive because those qualifiers were ridiculous. Um, I think to yeah. call them a qualifier, like I'm, I'm like hesitant to use that term. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, know, you were in the single elimination format of the tournament. Um, how did you <laughs> and Chrissy develop that chemistry that fast? Because I feel like that doesn't happen all that often unless you get like a, like a yeah. one-off honeymoon tournament, but then the next one hmm. kind of drop off. But you guys didn't have that drop off. You guys made a statement for sure. Thanks. Yeah, I just think we had really good practices, you know, and like we trained against you, Travis, like we trained yeah. against Michael Bogue, we got to train against Bill Kalinske, against Emily Stockman and Kelly Larson, and we just put ourselves in really tough environments in practice, and um, so when it came to the qualifier, I mean, to be honest, that was like, it was a tough qualifier for sure but I have been qualifying since I got back in beach volleyball. Like there wasn't, there was maybe one tournament since I've been back that I haven't had to qualify for. And Chrissy pretty much had to qualify all last year as well. So we're both kind of used to qualifiers and we played in a qualifier in Cambodia, um, which was our, both of our first FIVB events. So qualifiers weren't like, Oh my gosh, we've got this qualifier. I was like, yeah, this is run of the mill. What we, this is what we have to do. Right. Um, so I would say like, yeah, it was definitely that first qualifier, you know, we weren't sure how everybody was going to show up, um, but we knew we had, we had confidence in what we had been doing. And uh, what's nice with our team is like, Chrissy is very, she's such a strong individual, you know, and she just really, for as young as she is, I mean, she's like 23, I think she's very, um, she's very sophisticated and very mature. So she's somebody that I can like rely on, you know, and I, I very much like trust her opinion. And I think like, as far as strategy and seeing the game at certain times, like we're very good at listening, listening to each other and helping each other out with that. So uh, I, I just feel like on the court, we have a lot of trust for each other. Uh, and so when we got into some like critical moments in the game, it really helps. Plus she's really good. It seems like at like letting things go where I just like, hold on to things, you know, and I hunker down and I overthink them. She's like, Oh, it's all good. And I'm like, is it all good? Like, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Let's just like, okay. Yeah. It's fine. I just yeah. missed the serve twice, two times now, but yeah, let's just, we're good. We're still in the game. So she's so good at like getting me to like chill, which is, I think I need to 
it's good to have a partner that's like that versus like super aggro because then it's just like the fire just gets like brighter and hotter and (laughs) next thing you know we're losing (laughs) (laughs) one thing that i uh i want to ask you about is is cambodia so that was your first that was your first fivb ever or just in your since your comeback no ever like i never played any i played in all the norseka events but never an fivb Okay. Um, cause you mentioned that like when you came back, you're like, I want to be a defender on the world tour. Like, was that, was that a big moment for you to make that debut on the world tour as a defender? Or at that point, had you trained so much as a defender? You're like, you know what, this is just what I do. Actually, I like did not, I had these moments before that tournament where I'm like, I don't know how to play defense. Like I, I'm going <laughs> to forget what to do. I'm not going to be able to dig any ball. Like I, I overthought myself. What's that? So I think that all the time right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where you're like, shoot, like I, I don't, like I don't even know how to play volleyball. Like you just, you, when you think about it, but then you get into it, and then your body just kind of like does what it's been learning this whole time. So, um, so when I got into Cambodia, I mean it was a two star. So I mean it wasn't like I jumped right into a four or five star on the world tour, and I'm like I've made it. It was a two star. So I'm like, okay, this is a good opportunity to like start being a defender um and yeah it just was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be and it's nice having Chrissy up there too I mean yeah. I'm not gonna lie uh <laughs> so that gave me a bit of confidence especially when we were able to defeat uh Lauren and Sarah in pool like in pool play right away that was it was like okay like that's a good team um and we just beat them I mean it was 15 13 in the third it wasn't like we destroyed them it could have gone right. either way um but it was like okay so I felt like since then and then like from this AVP Champions Cup it's just been like and I'm I'm very self-critical like more than anybody else could be critical towards me I have a very high standard of like how I should be playing this game um so I feel like that's starting to match my expectation so and it's starting to create more confidence in me where I'm actually seeing what I what I imagine to see like starting to play out that uh, that first win over Sarah and Lauren, they ended up winning the whole tournament, right? Yeah, they ended up beating Therese and um, and Kelly in the final. We lost to them fifteen thirteen in in the quarters. So that was Which fun. I mean, if that that was your, what your only loss of the tournament was one, <laughs> but fifteen thirteen to the silver medalist yeah. in, in the quarters, like not bad. Yeah, but still, it's like you want to win the tournament, right? And then, well, you ended up getting your vengeance uh, in in the what the the final round of the first qualifier in Long Beach, right? Didn't yeah, you, you guys won what fifteen, twelve, fifteen, thirteen. Again, I honestly don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Oh, hold yeah. I'm Go try. Interested to hear, like, because for me, like switching to defense, or you know, I'm split blocking, but I've always like for me, it was like I wanted to prove something to myself like that I could do it but I honestly am like fully in love with blocking like it's probably my favorite skill of all uh what was it for you that that made you was it like I'm built my game's built for defense I feel like I can succeed more because that's more where my strengths are at or is it like I just like it or I'm interested in it like what what really made you want to switch to defense okay this is actually that's a good question because when he's I didn't really know that until I thought about it but I literally, okay, I really have a lot of inner guidance that um, I would say it's like me, like through prayer and following God, like that's like my inner guidance. And I kept breaking my fingers and having to have finger surgery. And like, I swear to you, I like, like before big tournaments, I would break fingers and, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I finally got to a point where I'm like, I like this voice was like, stop blocking. Like you need to, like you're a defense, like stop, you need to play defense stop blocking and so it was almost like I would make a joke like oh I gotta stop blocking and then I listened to myself like no you need to stop blocking but it's the same I never really saw myself as a defender ever like not when I started playing you know right after college um that wasn't ever a thing but um it's the same reason why I decided to play beach volleyball instead of overseas um, indoor because I want to always compete at the highest level that I possibly can so as I started, when I came back and I started seeing the game develop, I realized, well, if it was possible for me to get a little bit quicker, to get a little bit better ball control, you know, 
like I could actually get a blocker who's bigger than me and maybe our game could be like this super physical game that could potentially be one of the top teams you know so it's always like the desire like hmm how like how how good can you be like and if it takes switching a position and like sucking at first maybe that's that's what you need to do you know yeah totally and I feel like when you switch positions and play two different positions, you learn so much more about the game. Like, even if you did have oh, to go yeah. blocking, like for me, I figured out that my timing with the defender is so important. Like we have to move together. It's not like I can just do what I do at the net. Like I used to do at Hayden with Trevor. And before I was like, I didn't really realize that, that my, your timing as a defender has to move with your blocker. And, you know, if you're not the fastest player in the world, then your blocker can't necessarily be just like shifting around uh, because it just doesn't work. That's what I've realized. But my point is like your perspective of the game just like grows totally. And and you'll be more, I think I'll be better off if I do go back to full-time blocking, I'll, I'll be better off for having played defense for a while. Yeah, absolutely. And that was one of the reasons I actually went to Florida state um, was because I knew I, there was so much more of the game I needed to learn and Brooke Niles was there and Hector Gutierrez. And then like, these would be great teachers because it's, I mean, for a lot of like players that come out, especially like right out of college. Well, I mean, when I was playing, they didn't have college beach volleyball, but like you, you, you want to play, but you're raw and you don't have a lot of uh, like guidance at, in the form of coaching, you know, like we're actually learning the game and that's definitely like a missing piece. So the more you can actually learn about the game, all aspects of it, the better you're going to be, you know, and like, who doesn't want to learn? I mean, I don't know. I, I love learning. So <laughs> <laughs> what do you do outside of playing uh, to learn the game? Do you watch a lot of film or do you just like have conversations or, I mean, you practice so much that like you probably do that. <laughs> yeah. like, we'll see when I'm not practicing, I'm practicing Travis. <laughs> <laughs> then you're probably sleeping and then you're at McHale's and then you're back. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, That's actually a good question because I I always feel like uh, you could be doing more, like you could be learning more, you could be studying more film. You know, there's always like that more thing. I'm like, shut Mm -hmm. up. Uh, (laughs) But uh, I would say for me, it's conversations with people, with like Evie, with Mikhail, Um, even sometimes just a good book. And it's like the more I can learn about myself or how I understand things, it just helps me understand the game better because I'm not going to be like a Sarah responsible as a defender. And so if I were to look at a player like that and say like, Oh, in order for me to be a great defender, I have to be flying through the air like this, or I have to be, you know, and it's like getting away from all of that stuff and really just knowing like who I am and then being able to highlight like the strengths that I can bring uh, to the game. But I, I would say like, for sure, if I, I would, I would like to watch more film and, um, but sometimes like it's just really bored watching film and I have the worst luck with technology. Like, I don't, I don't know how you always, you have such good, like YouTube, you know, you can load these things. I like my YouTube loading always crashes or it takes like <laughs> 24 hours. I can't even tell you how many cameras I bought that have gotten hit by volleyballs and broken. It's like, it's <laughs> tragic. <laughs> yeah if we ever need practice film cut up just send it my way it'll be ready in 10 minutes (laughs) that's like if somebody wanted a job at like cutting up practice film i swear they would have they could have a lot of work honestly that's a great idea actually yeah there should be someone that just send them over and lord knows i love watching films (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) but i i think you mentioned that you know you're not a sarah sponsor and i think that that's such an important aspect like not even just in beach volleyball but in life in general where you have to realize like who you are not supposed to be because like you know i mean like i'm not going to be an anders mole at the net like i'm six four i don't jump 45 inches out of sand and i can't just make not yet right Right, not yet (laughs) (laughs) once But who, like, have you kind of figured out who you are as a defender? Because sometimes that takes a long time. And I know that, I mean, try, you probably went through a, a similar process where you were like, what, who, what is happening back in this side I'm of the court? Still in that. I'm still in that process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, just um, learning more about, like, who you yeah, are. Yeah, just, like, what kind of defender you are or just player in general. Oh, you're asking me what kind of player I am? Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> um, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it kind of like it cut out a little bit. So You're good. But um, I, I mean, I'm a really physical player, and that's I try my best to get away from that. I like, and I, but at the same time, it's one of my strengths is just like being able to get up and just like freaking blast a ball. And I think that's one of the strengths that I have is that not all defenders have is a lot of defenders, especially on the women's side, shoot around a bunch. Um, so I want to keep that side, but like with having a coach like Evie, it's great because he really challenges me to do, use more vision, to work on more shots, to like continue to increase like the level of the game instead of be just like this brutish, like, rawr, like, you know, I'm just going to jack the ball because I did that a lot during the champions cup and it's fine during like the first two thirds of the game, but it's that last third of the game when people play your strengths and then you're losing those matches by two or three points because, Oh, they just made a play on you because you didn't, you didn't change it up enough. You didn't bury your offense. And when the game gets close, you go back to the hitting angle. So um, let's mix it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I had to do against Phil. He blocked me like 80 times the first two times we played him. I'm like, I'm just not going to come barreling in angle and then hit angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get over him. And if he, if it goes high, at least when he blocks it, it'll come back and we can cover it. Um, yeah. So I can totally relate on that one. <laughs> but there's still the times. <laughs> that's right Got but there's still times i swear when it's like i know they know i'm gonna hit this ball angle but i can freaking beat them yeah and then you get blocked <laughs> but you're like no i swear <laughs> yeah i think that's a good mindset too like you can't be dumb about it but also to be like i'm gonna challenge you I i'd like to yeah. see you stop me here and then they stop you like all right that was stupid but, <laughs> but i'd like to see you do it again <laughs> i think my, my favorite is when when taylor gets roofed by someone he like stares the blocker down like why would you do that <laughs> he's like that's not happening again he like he stares them down i'm like this is so reversed <laughs> that's well, awesome <laughs> it's great though but what uh like, what's the ultimate goal for you? So you've, you've had your, your first stint with volleyball popped out, and now you're back as a defender. Um, what's kind of the, the ultimate goal? I know you mentioned you want to play the game at the highest level, um, but what, is, what are we ultimately shooting for? Yeah, I, I mean, I want, to, I want to be a consistent athlete on the world tour um, and put myself – in a position to play and advance like on podium for five stars, four stars, like world, if there's a world champs, like of course every athlete wants to play in an Olympic game. Um, so those are all goals that I'm like, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm like, you know, let's see, I'm curious what my ceiling is, you know? And, um, and I'm also inspired and encouraged by people that have continued to play well into like, their late 30s and their 40s at a high level so I feel like there's really no limit to like what you're capable of and I don't think I know what my limits are yet so I just want to keep working and see what they are no more quitting out of Tracy Callahan there's no more quitting <laughs> <laughs> I quit quitting <laughs> there we go I love it um, one thing that Kevin Barnett did so well with on uh, the Amazon broadcast that I, I want to try to get better at is um, he gave you guys like such good opportunities to drop your sponsors. Um, and I know that you mm -hmm. have, you have a couple. So who's, um, who's kind of on, on team Callahan, if you want to mention so this, I don't, I, I just happen to be wearing this shirt right now. Weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that like happen? So, on <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, I'm, yeah, my favorite shirt actually. Um, yeah, so Horse Soldier has been behind me and Chrissy's success from day one, and they're this amazing bourbon. Um, they're out of Tampa, but they're opening up a distillery in Kentucky, and um, yeah, they've just been so fantastic with us and committed with us through the whole quarantine, and um, they are, like, the reason that we are, like, charging ahead, you know, so um yeah i'm really thankful for them and then um yeah another sponsor that i've just picked up is this company called muscle feast and okay. they've got really good like protein products and bcas and so yeah so those are my two sponsors right now 
Awesome. The whiskey, the whiskey market is just flooding itself into the beach volleyball community. Trevor and Taylor, whiskey with the crabs. Now we got whiskey with Tracy Callahan and Chrissy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? I know. <laughs> Well, you know what? Alcohol has always been a part of beach volleyball. So like, yeah. you know, let's like, let's bring it back. Let's bring it yeah. back. Let's bring the party back to the beach. Exactly. <laughs> I got the beer covered. Yeah. It's a I'm part great. we can all just bring our alcohol and have a big party. Exactly. <laughs> Try, I finally yeah. figured out what looks different with you. You shaved. The mustache is gone. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you, look, well, you look great. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How, how deep in this conversation are we, Travis? <laughs> yeah, you're just You're like scratching about it your head time. the whole time. Like, tries, yeah. there's something different about tries. His hair's getting longer. It's like, oh, there it is. It's tan. Is tan? <laughs> tan. <laughs> um, well, Trace, is there uh, anything else that you want to talk about? Anything we might have missed? Um, anything you want to mention? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I guess I always want to talk to like any like sort of young and upcoming person who's like been in my position before or like any of your guys's position and I, it's really kind of like try what you were saying before it's like the intention that you bring into whatever you're doing you know and this like being in the quarantine the whole virus like we don't know what's happening are there going to be tournaments i've just committed myself personally to like okay i'm just going to pretend like it's a normal season. So I'm going to train from like, you know, a little bit before February because we have that tournament. So like January to like November, and I'm going to just treat it like a season. And I'm not going to go back in my fourth, back and forth in my mind. Like, do I amp up for a tournament? Do I amp down for it? Like, just I'm going to be consistent. And then when everything figures itself out, like at least I'm prepared, you know? And I just think for anybody who's like coming up that wants to play that maybe they want to play professionally, or maybe for anyone that's like, right in the qualifier that's like I don't know if I'll be able to do this next year you know it's been a hard year like you know I was at that 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 precipice where it's like you can make these rational decisions in your mind that say like coaching beach volleyball in college is a much better decision because I will be able to provide for my family and xyz but like ultimately it wasn't what was what was the seed that was planted in, my, in me you know it wasn't like what I was meant to do and I did it but it really it, it took me away from what I was supposed to do so I really feel like I actually lost time and who knows if I would have stayed with that like what kind of player I could be at this moment in my life you know so I just like want to encourage any player that's like at that moment where like the fear and the uncertainty of everything is maybe going to take them away from what they feel like they're meant to do just like just keep going and just trust that like that God's going to take care of you and that, and, but you got to do the work, you know, and there, and find the people around you that are going to speak truth to you and that are going to encourage you. And that will, will really be people that you can rely on, you know, because everybody's going to have an opinion that says like that everybody who's not good for you, I should say, who, who's afraid of what could happen or thinks that you should be doing the smart thing. Like, cause honestly, beach volleyball is not the smart thing. Like, let's be real. Right. <laughs> It's, ne it's never been the smart thing, <laughs> but, but like, I guess I'm, I've realized now, like in my thirties that like life is just really short and, and it's important to realize that opportunities that we may have always had our entire lives. It doesn't mean that we're always going to have them for the rest of our lives, but there's a window. So whatever you're doing, just do it with everything that you have, you know? And I think that's how I'm going to continue to um play out the rest of my professional career is like I just want to maximize it you know because I'm not guaranteed and try I feel like you have lived that out you know where you yeah. you you probably are playing now with such a different mindset and and belief in yourself and understanding of how small of a window it is right yeah yeah totally I mean you lived through that I mean, yeah totally and the fact that I got somewhere where I wasn't sure if I could get there. I just decided that I wanted to go down that path. And then I reached that, gave me the confidence to do it again and, and try to do it again and again, you know? It wasn't like, I'm gonna go try to win the gold medal. It was like, right. I wanna be a professional athlete. I wanna right. be an elite professional athlete. So I'm gonna live that life. And then a year, few years in, it just happened. And I'm like, whoa, it worked. Right. <laughs> And then you're like, whoa, I achieved that. So what else can I do? And then yeah. you said it again. And then, you know, eventually you'll get there if you, if you keep, keep at it. So it's, 
yeah, it's, it's just about, I think it's just about the experience. Like, what do you want your life experience to be like for me right now? It's, I want to go, I want to win the gold medal, but my goal is not win the gold medal. My goal is to go for the gold medal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's not really like other people, other people hear it. They're like, well, try to rank like 15th in the world. And the Olympics was supposed to be just now. Like, how do you think you're going to win the gold medal? It's like, I want to go for the gold medal. I want that experience, not necessarily. And I think that will give me the best chance to actually get it. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's a fine line, but really it's just a journey like with yourself. And I, I think you're right on point with where you're going. Yeah, that's so true. It is a journey with like with yourself because I was even this week after practices, I would just sometimes like sit back and think like, you know, we'd go up to the court in Chatsworth and I'm like, dang, like, this is just, this just such a beautiful experience, you know? And like, and I have, I've always like, since I was young, this is like one final thought, I guess. But when I was young, I always had this um, idea of like manipulation of time. Like I never saw time as like linear. I always saw, like I would jump in my mind to the future and then in the future be looking back at the present. And then I would like, think about how it would be if I was in the future looking back on this time and like, Oh, I got to do, I got to relive this experience. So I would like play with time sometimes in that way. Um, and so it, it just kind of, I don't, yeah, that was kind of a confusing thought, but, um, (laughs) what I was saying is that like after practices, I would just kind of sit back and reflect on like that time and just, it was so precious because, it, it's not always going to be there and it's enjoyable like training yeah. training and like working your ass off and sweating until you collapse like it's so enjoyable like I love that experience and so to go back to your study yeah, it is a journey like with yourself you know and being able to enjoy the things that and be able to live out the things that you love so yeah it's yep. been cool yep I love it well where can our listeners follow along your journey uh either Instagram Twitter wherever you may be yeah so I'm on Instagram at Callahan Volleyball all right nice and simple <laughs> <laughs> i do have a twitter but i like don't do anything with that <laughs> yeah volleyball is is definitely an instagram heavy sport it's funny like the nba nba twitter is great and then volleyball is like purely instagram so yeah <laughs> I, I never got on tiktok so you know yeah, i'm trying i'm trying not to i'm <laughs> holding out <laughs> not to <laughs> Well, Trace, thanks for coming on. Thanks for taking time out of one of your very few vacations during the year. And uh, I'm sure that I'll be seeing you on a court sometime soon. Yeah, thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thanks. Shoots, everyone. Shoots.